usually when I'm shooting my workshop videos here, I'm shooting at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. In other words, what we see is 30 individual pictures all put together real fast and you know how it works. But this camera, I can set the shutter speed of those frames. Normally I have it running at a 30th of a second because I want to be able to have my lens closed down as much as possible to give myself as much depth of field as possible. A lot of you camera buffs, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Occasionally, um, I might have it at a 60th of a second. And that means that each individual frame will have less motion in the, in the, in the, in the frame. But it's not real important with this sort of thing. Uh, so I usually have it at a 30th of a second. However, this camera has the ability to go right up to one eight thousandths of a second for each frame. And I was thinking, how accurate is that? Is that is it accurate? Or is it, you know, how would, how would somebody like me, an ordinary guy like me, test it? There's testing equipment out there, I'm sure, but I'm not going to go buy it just to test my camera. And I'm thinking, how could I test to see how close it is? And then I thought of a way. And to illustrate that way, I'm going to tell you a story. I live here in Winnipeg. And this time of the year, it affectionately gets called Winterpeg. Now, for me personally, it's not an affectionate term. But anyway, when I used to go visit my mom in Kelowna, which was about 1,200 miles by road west of here, uh, I would go down the Trans-Canada Highway. And it's pretty much dead straight until you get to the Rocky Mountains. And you go through most of the prairies. And there's places there that, it, in fact, most of it is extremely flat. You'll be going along and you might just come over a very, very slight rise and then you look down into like a valley. A very, very shallow valley, but you can see maybe 10 miles ahead. Now, picture a farmer's house off to the right about three miles. And he's right in the middle of this valley, up sort of on a little rise, and he also can see down into the valley, and he can he can actually see the Trans-Canada Highway going along, and on a clear day he can see the cars. So, we'll call him Farmer. Now, if Farmer looks off to his left a little bit, he can see a town. And if he looks off to his right, he can see another town. It's about five miles space between those two towns. We'll call them Town A and Town B. In Town A there's a pizza joint and they have pizza delivery. Now the pizza delivery guy who we will name Teenager, he prides himself on being able to deliver pizzas from Town A to anybody in Town B in under five minutes. It's just doable. Not legally, but it's doable. Anyway, Farmer, who's up about three miles off the road there and can see everything. Oh, and by the way, Teenager has the noisiest car around. I mean, it, it sounds like a top fuel dragster. And when he cranks that thing up, Farmer can hear it. And he knows he's coming. And every once in a while, Farmer will look. And sure enough, there goes Teenager. He's passing everything that's going in the same direction that he is. And uh, he got the farmer got to thinking one day, how fast is he actually going? Well, farmer knew that just pretty near straight out in front of him, there was a house. And then on the next section on on the next section over on the corner, there was another house, and the, he knew that these houses were exactly one mile apart give or take a few feet because of the way they were situated on the corners of the sections which were a mile apart. So he thought to himself, you know, I'll bet you I can figure out how fast he's going. So Farmer hears the, this uh, noisy engine start up and 
and he he goes outside and he watches and sure enough he can just see this little black spot just a tearing down the Trans Canada Highway and so he gets his watch ready and then he's watching he's watching he's watching he's watching and all of a sudden the car passes house number one and he takes note of the seconds and then he he waits and he watches and after a while it passes house number two and he takes note of the seconds well a little simple math in his mind it was 27 seconds farmer thinks to himself my goodness he's doing about 125 mile an hour because it takes a minute to travel a mile at 60 so if you're doing it in less than half a minute you must be doing over 120 right well you know we can figure out how fast that shutter's going by doing much the same thing. Some of you will recognize my homemade paint shaker from a few episodes ago uh, uh, when I was doing the uh, pen series. And uh, this motor, if I plug it in, it will turn 1725 RPM, pretty much regardless of the voltage, within reason. It's an induction motor. It turns exactly that speed unless you overload it. So I know that if I plug it in here, it, the shaft is going to be turning at that speed. Well, I figured out how far something on a 4 inch diameter uh, disc would travel if it was on the circumference of that disc at that speed in one eight thousandths of a second. And I'm going to show you. Here we are back in my computer in the drawing program and I've drawn out a disc four inches in diameter. It'll be exactly four inches in diameter when I print it out. Now that means that at 1725 revolutions per minute it turns 28 and three-quarter revolutions per second. Now you'll notice at the very top I've drawn out seven little dots, seven little squares. Now those squares, the width of each one, represents the distance that the circumference should turn if the shutter was opened for only one eight thousandths of a second. Now this should work. I'm hoping that it, when, you, when we take, uh, when we photograph the, uh, the uh, thing spinning that we're going to be able to see that the blur has traveled about that far. In other words, 1.3 degrees of rotation. I think you get what I'm talking about. I hope you do anyway. Let's get at it here. I'm going to be putting on my fastest lens here. For those of you who are camera buffs, this is a 50 millimeter, 1.4. Now, uh, very common lens, very, very common, probably millions of them in the world. But it's also my brightest lens, and I'm going to need all the light I can get here. So we'll be sticking that on to photograph this while it's spinning. Now I've drawn a circle and centered it the same diameter as this pulley. And what I have here is just ordinary water soluble glue. In other words, a kid's glue stick. And I think it should be able to adhere the paper to this metal. Don't see why not. I don't think I need too much here. And we'll just get it centered on that circle that I drew. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, that should dry on there. Give it about an hour.
And I don't want this thing moving around on us. Appears like that that glue does not want to hold. Okay. I don't know if I should reprint this out and cut another one. Still got the design in the computer, I could easily do that. Or maybe first while it's still on there, I'll just put a little bit of CA medium all the way around the edge and use the curing agent and see what happens. Try this again. And maybe I should just reinforce it just a little bit with tape here. I don't think the centrifugal force is going to uh, tear that paper apart, but you never know. All right. Okay, that's not going to come off. Well, let's try it and see if it works. Now I've got that centered pretty much on the shaft. And let's just zoom in on those dots there. And then what I'm going to do now is just slide this back and forth to make sure that those little dots on the edge there are about as focused as they can get. They are incredibly overexposed right now. That's why they're blurry. You'll notice when I stop it down that they're just going to sharpen right up. Okay, I'll go back out here. Yeah, we're still centered. You'll notice here I'm shooting at a thirtieth of a second. I'm going to speed it up now. You'll notice that my ISO is going to start to climb. Okay, there's a thousandths, and I'm already up to 640 ISO. So when I go all the way up here to an eight thousandths, I'm at 5,000 ISO. I'm still at F1.4, in other words, wide, wide open. So I'm going to use some uh, floodlights here, and that's going to uh, lower the ISO, and it'll make it maybe a little, little better. Um, yeah, in fact, it's going to lower it considerably. So here we go with the lights. Oh, that's good. I could probably close my lens down a little bit yet too. Why don't I do that? It'll sharpen it just very, very slightly. Okay, they're F2. F2.2. Okay, now I'm going to use another spotlight, a handheld one. I think this lens is at its sharpest around F4.5 or thereabouts, but that's good enough. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use this handheld spotlight here, and uh, when I turn that on, you're going to you're going to notice that the ISO is going to drop even more. Yeah, that's going to be very acceptable. Okay. Let's give it a whirl and see what happens here. I'm going to hold this by by my hand here. Push the record. And find my plug. Okay. Kind of awkward here. I should have hooked up switches. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, that'll be plenty. Well, let's go and see what we got. Now keep your eye on those little black dots. You're going to notice that they basically are visible all the time. Yeah, so the shutter's working. It's an electronic shutter, so you get a little bit of some sort of weird jello effect going on there. However, yeah, it still it works good. Uh, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, you want to know how far Teenager would go at 120 miles an hour? You know, in, uh, in an eight thousandth of a second? Well, he'd go about a quarter of an inch, maybe a smidgen more.